Come follow me, Jesus said. This is God's Word. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Dear followers of Jesus, have you ever had one of those awkward pauses in a conversation? You know, you're talking to a group of people and maybe somebody says something weird or two people have been arguing and the conversation just drops or maybe the conversation just runs out and then there's that awkward pause. I hate that awkward pause. Excuse me, Mike is not cooperating today. See if that works better. I hate that awkward pause, and I imagine all of you hate it too, because it's so tense, right? You're just standing there, you don't know what to do or what to say or how to get over it. That's why one of the things I really appreciated about my friend Craig was how he would break that awkward pause. Craig and I were assigned as roommates freshman year of college, and we became good friends over the years. He's a pastor in Michigan now. Craig's a very friendly, joyful, gregarious guy, so whenever there was one of those awkward pauses, he would just look around at everybody and say, so, have any of you ever been fishing? And that kind of served to just acknowledge the awkward pause, and it brought a smile to our faces, and it got us over it. Yeah, it got a little cheesy and old after a while, but it was still appreciated. Now, I wonder if any of you have ever had one of those awkward pauses in your life. You see, I think everybody at one point or another struggles with a few questions, and the questions are, you know, what am I doing here? Why do I exist? What is the purpose of my life? And when we ask these questions and when we struggle with these questions, it seems like our life just kind of comes to this awkward pause where We don't know what to do or where to turn. For example, uh, many times people when they're young go through what's called an identity crisis, where they're asking, you know, what is my purpose? What am I supposed to do with my life? And then later, many people go through what's called a midlife crisis crisis, where they look back at their lives and they ask, you know, was it all worth it? I mean, my life is half over. Was this my purpose? Is this what I was supposed to do? And I think these times in life are appropriately called crises. It's terrible to think that your life has no purpose or meaning. And when we go through these crises and ask these questions, our life just kind of comes to this awkward, tense pause. Well, I hope to acknowledge the awkward pause and break the tension by asking you today, so, have any of you ever been fishing? Today is the last day in our sermon series called Aha, where Jesus has been revealing stuff to us. It is my hope that at the end of today's sermon we can say, Aha, I have found my purpose. We're going to find our purpose by first looking at what Jesus' purpose was. Our reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 4. It's right at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. 
Jesus had just been baptized by John the Baptist, and at his baptism, the Father had, told Je- or had said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So at his baptism, the Father marked Jesus out as the Messiah. So, naturally, Jesus then goes and starts to do the work of the Messiah. Our reading starts out like this. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea, along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. We can see from this portion of God's word that Jesus' life had meaning and purpose. He was to be the Messiah. He was to save the people from their sins. Jesus' life had so much meaning and purpose that it practically had an instruction manual. We call it the Old Testament. We can clearly see Jesus' life and his purpose in the prophecies of the Old Testament. It goes like this. Step one, be born of a virgin. Step two, Live a perfect life and fulfill every single law, rule, and regulation and prophecy. Step three, die on the cross. Step four, rise from the dead. Step five, ascend into heaven and rule until the second coming. Jesus' life had meaning and purpose, and he fulfilled that meaning and purpose. Jesus fulfilled every single prophecy that was written about him. Our scripture reading for today says that Jesus went and lived in Capernaum because it was prophesied that he would do that in Isaiah. Jesus fulfilled every single prophecy, every single rule, every single regulation. One of the things that Jesus did was he brought light to the darkness. Our reading for today says that on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You see, before Jesus came and fulfilled his purpose, we too had a purpose. And that purpose was to live in the land of the shadow of death. Before Jesus came and fulfilled his purpose in our lives, we were living in the land of the shadow of death. All our purpose was to gratify our sinful nature. We had a hopeless, purposeless existence. But our scripture says that Jesus came and he brought us light. He illuminated the darkness. He cast out the darkness of sin from inside us. And He saved us. Jesus had a purpose. His purpose was to save you and me. And Jesus accomplished that purpose. And that purpose also gave His disciples a purpose. Our reading continues. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus' life had purpose. He came to save the people from their sins. He came to bring light to the darkness. But 
that purpose would have been meaningless if nobody knew about it. So, Jesus called some disciples. He called Peter, James, John, and Andrew. He told them, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They were to go out and catch people. But instead of using nets, they would be using God's word. They would go out and spread God's word to people. What an amazing purpose. These guys were called to tell people that their sins were forgiven, that God loved them, that they didn't have to worry anymore. What an amazing purpose. They were to be fishers of men. Our reading for today ends with a summary of Jesus' work in Galilee and really of his work in general. It says, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. One thing that is absolutely clear from this reading is that Jesus fulfilled his purpose. He went out and he told people about the kingdom of God. He told them about forgiveness, and he showed them his love and compassion by tending to their needs, by healing their diseases. Jesus fulfilled his purpose purpose. Now, some of you may be thinking, you know, pastor, this is all fine and good, but what about me? I mean, Jesus' purpose is easy. He practically had an instruction manual written. The disciples' purpose, that's easy. They got a direct call from Jesus. But what about me? What is my purpose? Well, just like the disciples' purpose flowed from Jesus' purpose, so too our purpose flows from Jesus' purpose. We have a wonderful message. We have the message of Jesus, the message that says every single rule and regulation, that was all done. Jesus did that and gave you His perfection. We have the message of Jesus being the light in the darkness. We have the message that your sins are completely forgiven and God loves you. That's an amazing message. That's a message that we can't keep to ourselves. Part of every single person's purpose in this room is to share the message of Jesus. We, too, have been called to be fishers of people. Uh Aha! We have found our purpose. I think it's very interesting that Jesus compares catching people to catching fish. And I think we can learn a lot about catching people if we think about fishing. For example, if you'd like to catch people, you have to be diverse. Usually, serious fishermen have tons and tons of equipment. They got a tackle box that's just bursting apart with all these lures. They have all sorts of different rods with different strength line on them, and they know all sorts of different fishing techniques. Fishermen are diverse, and they're diverse so that they can catch different kinds of fish at different times of the year. If we would like to catch people, we too have to be diverse. And the Bible is full of all sorts of different messages that you can share about Jesus. You can tell people about God's compassion You can tell people how Jesus did all these amazing healing miracles. You can talk about how sin was like we were in this debt that we could never pay off, but Jesus came and he paid it off. You can talk about how it was like we were estranged from the Father and Jesus came and he brought us back together. Like a tackle box that is full of all sorts of different lures, the Bible is full of all sorts of different messages that you can share. 
If we would like to fulfill our purpose of being fishers of people, we have to be diverse. Second, we have to be patient. Could you ever imagine a fisherman who goes out to a lake, casts out his line once, reels it in, and says, well, guess that didn't work, and then goes home? No, that's ridiculous. Usually, People who fish stay out there for hours and they go to all sorts of different parts of the lake. I recently heard something crazy. There are some people who go fishing who will drag this little house out onto the ice with a truck and then they'll drill a big hole in the ice and sit there in the cold for hours looking at that hole, hoping that a fish comes by. People who fish are patient. If we would like to catch people, we too have to be patient. Oftentimes, a person is not going to become a Christian after you share the message of Jesus with them once. It's going to take a lot of patience. It's going to take a lot of time continually fostering that relationship. And you're going to have to invite them to church many times or tell them about Jesus many times. If we would like To catch people, we have to be patient. And finally, although it should be obvious, it needs to be said. We actually have to get out there and do it. It doesn't matter how much equipment a fisherman has or how patient he is. If he doesn't get out there and actually fish, he's never going to catch anything. If we don't actually get out there and share the message of Jesus, we're never going to catch any people. We actually have to get out there and do it. You know, fishing is such an extensive and diverse topic that we could make many more comparisons between fishing and evangelism, but I think you get the point. We are to be fishers of people. We're to be patient, diverse, and we're to go out there and catch people. So now that we've found our purpose, I have to ask, how have you been doing at fulfilling that purpose? How have you been doing at catching people? Have you gone out there and fished? Or have you allowed the attitude of the world to creep into your heart? The attitude of the world that says, you know what, the purpose of life is not to share the message of Jesus. The purpose of life is not to glorify God and love your neighbor. No, the purpose of life is to enjoy it. Get yourself a nice job that gives you plenty of vacation so that you can go out and go hunting, fishing, camping, go to Disneyland, go to Florida. Don't tell other people about Jesus. That just ruffles feathers and makes people uncomfortable. Life is meant to be enjoyed. Brothers and sisters, that is not an appropriate attitude to have. It's not an appropriate attitude to have because Jesus caught you. Jesus cast out the net of his word and he caught you because he loved you, because he wanted to save you from a purposeless, hopeless existence, because he wanted to give you his perfection and invite you into his kingdom. Jesus caught you. He saved you. He gave you his perfection. And now he's given you a task to do and accomplish that task. So go fishing, brothers and sisters. Go out and tell others the message of Jesus, because Jesus saved you. Amen.